better, right? <laughs> Hola, United Nations. My name is Gabi Natale. I'm a Triple Emmy Award winning journalist. I'm a speaker, author, and entrepreneur. And it is my honor uh, to be today leading and moderating the discussions around perspectives and narratives when it comes to our community. Because as we have, uh, as we have seen throughout yesterday and today, it all comes down to something. Uh, these problems and these challenges around representation are present across all industries. And the thing is, when we don't see ourselves proportionately or fairly represented, we realize early on that we have two choices moving forward. Choice number one is to embrace what I call the emulator mindset. And that is something that we're very familiar with which is to look around, see how everyone else like me is doing, and then set my future goal based on someone else's past result. I want to emulate their achievements. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if we all embrace an emulator mindset, our best case scenario is the status quo. And as we have seen throughout all these conversations, the status quo is not enough. We crave more. So we have another option, and that is to embrace a pioneer mindset, a pioneer spirit. And that is, it starts in the same way, to look around, see how everyone else is doing, but only this time, believing in your vision even before you have the results to validate it, opening ourselves up to the possibility of becoming a pioneer. And it doesn't matter if you are sitting in this room of incredible leaders, or if you're watching this on live stream and you're a student in a small town, every time we choose to pioneer, we move the world forward. Every time we choose to pioneer, we move the world forward. And that's why getting together is what's going to make the difference. And today I have the pleasure of having an amazing group of pioneers in the creative field. Uh, so please, let me welcome Pedro Lerma, CEO of Lerma, who today has been featured in Ad Age and Ad Week because he has three ads in the Super Bowl coming up. Woo! We also have today with us joining Ariana Stollars. She's the Managing Director of Growth and Product Innovation in Accenture, and she feels like home here because she works closely with the United Nations in sustainability projects. Welcome. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Karen Vega. She is the Vice President of Audience, Impact, and Intelligence in Paramount. And she was recently a juror for a, the ANA multicultural uh, competition. Welcome. So let's kick this conversation. Uh, the contributions of the Hispanic community have been highlighted throughout this summit, as we have seen. So when you take a look from the creative industries, what is the relevance of the Hispanic market and consumer? Karen, do you want to start? Thank you, Gabi. Thank you, everybody. Oh, here we go. There we go. Gracias. Gracias a todos. Thank you for having me here today. Um, can I just say by how encouraged I am by all of the content that we saw yesterday, that we saw this morning. This is my first Hispanic summit and it won't be my last and I hope we keep this on for many years to come because it's easy to get wrapped up in our day to day and go back to our work. But actually we need to be here every year and it has to keep on growing because these issues need resolve and more. <laughs> But um, yeah, to your question, Gabby, um, I think one of the things that in looking at all of the great presentations from yesterday, um, you all saw the data, you saw the facts. Uh, we already made a, a business case, right? We have all the tools, we have the facts, we have the insights. So it's up to us to go to our leadership and, and showcase that and make a case for ourselves. But when I think um, and reflect on everything that was said uh, and all the great work that's being done by the companies, one thing that I thought from a creative marketing brand lens is that we are leaving so much on the table in terms of creativity and the stories that we need to tell. 
Um, as content creators, I think we, again, we need to look at who's out there creating and telling our stories, who's actually accurately portraying us. And some of these content creators need to need that support. And us as brands can actually help surface uh, the success of those content creators. So uh, one of the things that I, I saw, for instance, was how amba Ambassador uh, Alicia Buenrostro, how she mentioned, right, that we're looking to, to really have a solve for the empowerment of women in, in the Latin community, um, how we want to talk about the migration stories, right, how we want to talk about climate change, M Marty talked about that, and mental health issues. Yes, all of that needs to be talked about, and it, it's, it's subject matters that, have, that really matter to all us all, but we need the Latinx lens on that, and those stories are just being left on the table, and, and we're not seeing that in the big screens, in films, and documentaries, and we really are craving for that type of content. So um, I think overall, you know, I, I still see sometimes, we still get the novelas, the reality TV shows, uh, Stacy talked a little bit about that, right? How we are and portrayed. And sometimes in the telenovelas that we create, yeah. we portray ourselves as criminals. Absolutely. Serious, yes. So, you know, and while we love all that type of programming, we need to have more richness in the genres and the, the content of how we are portrayed and in the topics. So I think uh, overall, we already made the case. We just need to, we need to do, we need to do. Perfect. Pete? Thank you. So, uh, you know, the question was, how is the Hispanic market relevant to, the, to business categories? And, and uh, my question really uh, is really a question back, and that is, what segment or for what segment is the Hispanic market not relevant? We've seen that if brands want to grow in the next 20 years, that growth is going to have to come from them connecting in meaningful ways to the Hispanic market. And it's not just, uh, you know, about the business opportunity. Brands need to understand that they have to be r relevant in culture. And so, um, you know, uh, so uh, one of my colleagues gave me an example. He was walking by Saks yesterday, and in their Christmas display, it was beautiful. They had all these, these mannequins. Uh, the male mannequin in this beautiful Christmas display was a mannequin of Bad Bunny. And so you're talking about Saks Fifth Avenue, one of the most exclusive retailers in the world, and they're leading with Hispanic. And that's what all brands need to be considering right now. Ariana, how do you think this would change the hearts and minds of a Hispanic consumer? We have a problem, okay? Like narratives are usually very fragile. We've been talking about things like people like me. You take a look around the room and see if you actually see someone that looks exactly like you or that talks and speaks exactly like you, right? So the ideal of reaching Hispanics as a cohort, as a group, I mean, it's an ideal. It's an ambition, unity when it comes to messaging and communications, it's a dream, but it shouldn't be the strategy. In the era of personalization, there is nothing more profound than addressing people by their own personas. Richard was talking yesterday, Richard Edelman was talking yesterday about the need to keep budgets like growing instead of like shrinking. Yes, of course, because we need those budgets to stretch so we can hopefully address Argentinians like me through messaging and symbols that are relevant to us as Argentinians like living in this country and that we can do the same thing with like every single other group. When we saw yesterday the numbers for, um, from the U.S. Uh, uh, Bureau and Census, I mean that's a problem, right? Because you see that for example Argentinians, again, we were not even there from a scale perspective. We're less than a million people here in the U.S. So what do we do about that? Okay, the answer to that cannot be neutrality, which is like usually what you see. You see a single budget addressing Hispanics, and then what you do is you try to be as neutral as possible to make sure that you capture the most people by a single message and a single set of symbols. 
semiotics are important and we need to change that. So if we really want to address people like me, understand that there are like so many like me, that we're all like individuals that we're driven by choice and that there is nothing more personal that feeling and seeing yourself represented in something that is not generic, right? but it's specific to you. So it's an invitation really to all the marketers here to keep like, you know, uh, putting the dollars behind addressing people individually, hopefully through other, um, uh, you know, uh, set of like indicators in, in, in demographic and, and psychographic um, uh, criteria and not just the fact that we are all Hispanic. And in moments like the World Cup right now, we can really tell we are rooting for sometimes different things and the passions are running high. So yeah. yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I know, Karen, you have a lot of insights, a lot of yeah. data uh, on this topic. So what's your take? So uh, I agree, Ariana. I think um, uh, one of the things I think is, is practitioners in marketing, in media, in brands, we are afraid to lean into the intersectionality, right? The story, to unpack that, right? Because we have one budget, we wanna make the best of that one budget. Yes, of course, efficiency is, is always the key in business, but it, this is table stakes. I think there are, uh, us as practitioners are, uh, we are under research as Latinos, and because of that, right, I think we're, that's why we're not telling our true stories. That's why we're not telling the, the, the right passion points and connecting points where media is going to actually going to make someone connect, someone as a Latino connect with that. So um, I think to the way to get to our minds and hearts, which is what you originally asked, Gabby, is, is lean into our intersectionality. We are craving for our stories to be told, for our lived experiences to be on the big screen uh, and not be generalized. So uh, we, you know, Robert um, Rodriguez mentioned it yesterday, uh, there is a real lack of cultural competency, right? And it really takes intentionality, allyship, uh, dedication for all of us to, to for us and our allies to understand us more and what drives us, what are our passions, what are our motivations, and tell those stories. So overall, I think we're under research. And, you know, I, I, I have a little surprise to say that, you know, us at Paramount, we're looking to partner with Claudia and team to actually do a next wave of the Hispanic sentiment study and to actually research us and the youth, which is very important because Maria Cuba from Airbnb, you mentioned it, we are under-researched. We do need to look at the, the youth uh, and the Latino youth because there's so much dimensionality in that audience that we need to unpack that to, to really be able to tell those true stories now and in the future. Thank you. Pete? The, the opportunities that I see um, are really anything we want them to be. I, I, I think it is time that we as a community come out from um, the shadows of, you know, the other segments within the market. So I'll give you an example. So my agency used to be a division of a much bigger general market agency, and we always felt like the, we were, I mean, we were called a subsidiary. We were called a division. And we, we stepped away from that. We became an independent agency, and I felt like what we have to do is we have to change our mindset. We have to act like we are a grown-up agency. And what, what, we're, what you find when you change your mindset is that you really can accomplish anything. In the last year, we were recognized as Small Agency of the Year, and as Gabby said, we've got three Super Bowl spots that we're working on. And so... I think the opportunities are, are whatever you want them to be, but we have to quit thinking like we are a, a minority or something less. We, for a long time, have suffered from what I call an undeserved inferiority complex, and it's time for that to change. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're gonna move, we're gonna move the conversation around um, stereotypes and stereotyping, which is something that we are very familiar with. It's the reason why I became an entrepreneur, because I was working on camera and I didn't want it to be the sexy Latina or the um, only formal Latina. Uh, and that is uh, something that shapes the way we are seen uh, and it has uh, repercussions. So in terms of uh, progress, um, let's talk about our perception. Uh, do you believe there's been progress 
uh, in terms of fighting or redefining our narrative when it comes to stereotypes, Pete? I would say yes and no. I think there has been progress made. Um, and I feel like I bear a, a great responsibility, as does I think everybody in this room. When we go out and engage with the world, we are representing our community. And I take that role very seriously in, in my personal life and in my professional life, I take it seriously as well. So I feel like as, as an advertising agency, we have an opportunity to shape the narrative around who we are as a community. And I really, I try really hard to make sure that when we deliver a narrative, it is a narrative of somebody that is contributing to the community in a positive way, somebody that is succeeding in the world, someone who is uh, contributing to the, to the community in a philanthropic way, in, in ending up in professional roles that are elevated roles. It's, it's really important. And so I think we have to shape that uh, perception for the long term. I think that there has been uh, progress made. I think minimal progress because we still have obviously a lot of work to do, hence why we're here. Um, you know, if you look at the, at the big screen and in film, you have uh, Wednesday Adams, Jenny Ortega on the big screen, getting tons of positive buzz, uh, great representation. Uh, we have Anthony Ramos too with Transformers. Uh, Disney's Encanto, the, the story about Colombia, where I'm from, and the rich stories. It, you know, how, think about how proud we feel when we see those true stories told. That's the, uh, the emotion that we need to evoke um, as, as part of a film, in our brands, in our marketing, in the creative that we're creating. Um, and so, so yes, there's been those positive examples and small glimmers of, of definitely moving towards the right direction. But just as much, there's been negative examples, right? You think about um, the cancellation of Batgirl through HBO Max, and I'm sorry if anybody hears from there, right? I know content is, is a t tough place to be in right now. Uh, but that, that was, that was you know, a, unfortunately a downfall for us. Uh, I also look at the casting, right? James Franco was casted to play Fidel Castro. Mm -hmm. You couldn't find another Latino actor. Mm -hmm. There's plenty <laughs> of that out there. You know, we can't let our, our stories be appropriated. Uh, and then, you know, we also have uh, strides to make with, with uh, In the Heights too, the lack of Afro-Latinos there too, it was evident. So yes, we take one step back, one step forward, but we also take one step back. So uh, there, there's definitely um, things that we also need to watch out for in our industry and, and threats which are currently happening, uh, which diminish that progress that we made. And the economy is one of them the cancellation uh, of these great series with Latino creators uh, are canceled because of, of the economy, because the budgets are not there to support it, because of how we are at an inflection point in, in, the, in the world of streaming, in the world of media, and we're that, cut in the middle. Do you think that Latino-led series are held to a higher standard? Some people say there's less patience, you know, so if it doesn't work immediately, you know, they get canceled very fast. I agree. I, I think it's, right, we don't let these uh, great productions, we don't give them time so that people can actually have to experience them, right? So one season is not enough to be able to define whether this mm -hmm. is going to be a hit or not. Uh, there's, there's plenty of examples where things haven't, were, were not a hit in the general market at first. So um, yes, la lack of patience. If, if people at the top are not seeing the dollars right away, that's it, we get cut. But that's a, also another issue. We need more of yeah. us in the content making decisions so that, w so that we can give us a chance. Mm -hmm. And also we need to be supportive of those products because at the end of the day, it is a business. And if the return is not there, then they're not going to um, support those type of projects again, or it's gonna be harder for those producers pitching those projects. Ariana? I would love to celebrate some um, of the progress in the space, in particular, our ability to permeate the so-called general market um, content, right? So 
raise your hand if you have, um, you know, enjoy as much as I did the Queen's Gambit last year. Okay. Do you know that Anya Taylor-Joy is Latina? Amazing. Okay, so that's the idea. And she was not portraying a Latina. She was portraying a chess player who was like winning in her game, right? So that's the idea as well. Let's continue to permeate those environments. We can do it. And there is more and more and more cases of that. So let's celebrate that. Let's elevate that. And let's share more of those stories. Now, let's be uh, concrete and specific. Do you have any initiative in mind? Does anyone comes to mind any company, an initiative that is doing great work to change this narrative? Um, Karen? Yeah, uh, when I look around the, the creative industry, the marketing industry, I, I see many brands certainly stepping up, some of them which are here and we heard from. Um, in particular, the big brands I've seen, McDonald's really uh, leans in very heavily on multicultural audiences, but also not leaving us uh, Hispanics uh, you know, behind. So I, I really appreciate them. But also P&G, right? Procter and Gamble. Uh, and, and we know that the consumer base for those products, are, it's, it's over indexes on Latinos. So we are their priority market. So yes, they, they're speaking to us, but also they're pro-social initiative. So it's not just about the creative, but are you giving back to the community? Because it's not about just portraying us, it's helping us. Uh, and I know that PNG does a lot, uh, of course, a lot of work with us and we are all human and uh, that, that should not go on scene. Um, I think there's other brands that are stepping up to the table. Target, I see Target uh, definitely uh, when I walk around the store, see the inclusion, um, see the displays. El Dia de los Muertos this past October was very evident, and I love that. This is, this is actually speaking to what we want to see, and, and we need more of them. We, we need more brands to be taking notes and stepping up to the plate. Karen, you mentioned PNG, and one of the biggest conversations in the past weeks uh, in the creative space has been uh, his uh, chief brand officer, Mark Pritchard, uh, saying that in his presentation that multicultural marketing is mainstream marketing. So, Peter, I'm, I'm wondering what's your take on, on stereotypes, changing narratives, and who's doing a good job about it? Um, well, first thing I will say is what Mark Pritchard said is something he's been saying for a while. He, he said it a little bit differently this last time around at the ANA conference when he said um, that the general market is dead, essentially. And, and it's true. If you are not addressing the multicultural market, then, then you're not doing marketing, is what he, he also says. And um, as far as other brands that uh, are doing it well, well, I'll talk about some of my clients. So. Uh, the Home Depot has been a client that has invested in the Hispanic market for decades now. And, um, and they're super committed. And in fact, we are also having conversations with them about what we're saying the, is the, the new general market. So they're having us present, we are their Hispanic agency, but they're having us present to all of their executive teams. They're having us present to their other partner agencies, including their general market lead agency. Um, and in a lot of cases, they're actually allowing us or inviting us in to play a role in a lot of the general market work too. So they, they recognize the importance of the segment. Um, someone yesterday uh, presented that 53% uh, of all new home ownership is coming from Hispanics. Well, the Home Depot knows that, and they know that for the next 20 years, it's going to come from Hispanics, and so they're giving us a seat at the table, and we are t doing everything that we can to take advantage of it. Um, as, as a result, I'll give you uh, an example of some work we did recently for them. Uh, it was a spot coming out of COVID where Hispanics had been disproportionately impacted negatively by COVID, um, both in terms of illness and in terms of job loss. But the Hispanic community is resilient, and we wanted to celebrate that. Uh, and so we did a spot around uh, a family launching a new business. So small business, again, is another area where um, Hispanics are, are fueling that growth, Latinas specifically, and we highlighted a Latina in this spot. And it, it was around opening a coffee shop. The spot was called Cafecito. It highlighted, again, Hispanic resilience, um, Latina entrepreneurship, the role of coffee in our culture. Andrea and I were talking about coffee in our culture um, just a while ago. And as a result, that work 
was tested uh, by the ANA. They have a cultural insights uh, and impact measurement score, and it was uh, recognized as one of the most effective uh, multiculturally relevant spots of last year. And so, again, if a brand recognizes it and, and really demonstrates a meaningful commitment beyond just going after the dollar, which is what I think a lot of brands do, so they can win. They, they have to walk the walk Absolutely. Through. Absolutely. We have time for only one more question, so I'm going to jump to the question where we're going to um, connect things that were said in the previous panel and things that were said throughout the whole uh, conversation today. So here's the thing. We talked about a lot of the challenges and the opportunities, but how can this industry, the creative industry, make efforts to be a win-win for both the brands, the organizations, and the community? Um, Karen? Yeah, I, I think um, accountability. Right. Um, we have to start measuring ourselves and our companies. We need, we again, we've talked about this. We all don't have the same starting line, but we have to start implementing measurement and and being able to understand where we are in the progress pipeline. And so um, uh, uh, one of the things that we are doing at Paramount, again, we have brands, we have films, we have consumer products. Our reach is expansive and content is is our business and so one of the things that uh, that i allude to is that stacy mentioned earlier that media is a tool for change and paramount launched content for change which is a corporate initiative launched um in 2020 sorry 2021 it actually originated from the bet brand black entertainment television uh and we expanded it across the entire company and it has three key pillars uh, one is uh, all about content, so really looking at how, uh, who is behind the camera, right? Who are the people that are actually creating the productions? Who are the writers? Who are the producers? Who are the showrunners? The next is all about our supply chain, so the vendors and partners that we work with. We are committed to hiring diverse own audiences, but also looking at, when we're looking at uh, creating a Latino uh, film or, or the inclusion of Latinos within our film, we have to make sure that we include those supply the, the supply chain, yeah, the, the production companies. And we're looking to make sure that they're Latino owned so that they, that authentic and authenticity is coming through in our content. And then lastly, we um, it's all about also our culture. So uh, our culture of Paramount underpins everything that we do. And so we've made some bold commitments as well, corporately, to be able to move up all of our lat Latino um, uh, uh, workers within our company and give them a seat at the table and bring them up, give them promotions. I am actually part of one of those uh, those employees that, that w is was part of that movement. And I like to think that I was there because I deserved it and I did a good job and not because it was a, a, a quota or a data to meet. So that, that's the mindset we all have to have. And so um, I'm encouraged by what my company is stepping up to do. I see the actions. I see what we're measuring, and we are by no means saying that we are doing uh, a superb job. We've got a lot of work to do, but we're out there and we're acknowledging it. Thank you. Ariana? Okay, to me it's our ownership. We don't like how we are portrayed. We don't like the narrative. Let's own it. Let's change it. Let's own it. Claudia, Claudia has a great video that she put together. I don't know if you, um, if you saw it, but it, she put together on like how we are portrayed, for example, around Cinco de Mayo, right? And you see, like, mainstream media saying, oh, this is like Cinco de Drinco, okay? Oh. Right. <laughs> Sad, but true, okay? It's not the National Day for Beer, and it's not the Mexican independence. Cinco de Mayo, it's the victory over the second battle that, you know, um, uh, the Mexican army, a really tiny, small army with no means, fought against the French in 18... 62 in Puebla, okay? And the, the winning of that gave them pride. And that pride, although it was a small, like, little tiny event, translated into the rest of the country, into that, like, unity and, like, pride of a shared, like, belief in that change is possible and that we can actually own our future. And if that we fight together, we can make it work. So my invitation to you is, if you work on a brand, 
reach out to Claudia, because I'm going to be working with Claudia to reclaim Cinco de Mayo as a celebration of pride. So next year, we don't see other people owning the narrative of us being drunk that day, but actually, it's going to be a celebration of like, pride for all of us. Thank you very much. Pete? I, I want to, I guess, support what Karen was saying earlier about accountability. Um, we have to hold corporate America accountable. And uh, a year ago or so, we created a tool that we called BIPI. And BIPI is an acronym that stands for Brand Inclusivity Performance Index. And it's a tool that you, where you can go to our website, you can type in a brand's name, and it will give you back a score. And that score is a, a compilation of several different inputs, but it's things like, is this brand um, supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion? Are they hiring? Are they promoting the way that they, uh, that they say they are? Um, what is the customer composition of this brand? Is it a multicultural customer base? Um, it looks at things like, what are those products? Um, it looks at, are they advertising in these multicultural segments? Are they, is the advertising creative targeted? Is it, is it truly coming from a Hispanic insight or for, from a, a black community insight? Um, and are they doing anything in the community? So are they walking the walk? Really, all of this is about walking the walk and keeping brands accountable. And I think if we can do that, we can make a whole lot more progress. Thank you very much, Pete. And in wrapping up, whether it is in the creative industries or in any industries that uh, spoke in the Hispanic Leadership Summit, we've seen the commonality of be bold, be brave, a lot of people talked about being the first or the only one in the room and sometimes feeling isolated. So I think it's important for us to know that we, we're all starting in a different place. And if we're in the same room and somebody started here and somebody started here, yes, we may be in the same room, but we are not in the same place because we had to have so many challenges to overcome, so many resources that we have to develop, that be proud that you are in that room. You're not lonely. You're representing all of us. So thank you to all our panelists, and thanks you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.